Welcome to Jesus Christ Prison Ministry and another video Bible study. Our topic, Deuteronomy chapter 9. Hear, O Israel, you are now about to cross the Jordan to get in and dispossess nations greater and stronger than you, with large cities that have walls up to the sky. The people are strong and tall, Anakites. You know about them and have heard it said, who can stand up against the Anakites? But be assured today that the Lord your God is the one who goes across ahead of you like a devouring fire. He will destroy them. He will subdue them before you. And you will drive them out and annihilate them quickly as the Lord has promised you. Every day as we get up, if we are obedient to God, if we are keeping his Ten Commandments as he commands us, not as our churches, not as our denominations, but if we've been studying the Word of God and putting it within our hearts, every day as we get up and cross the threshold, you might say, of our doorpost, go out into the world, we will dispossess Nations stronger than us, problems stronger than us. We will conquer in all that we do if we do it in righteousness for the Lord Jesus Christ. In everything that we do, God will bless if we live for him. After the Lord your God has driven them out before you, do not say to yourself, the Lord has brought me here to take possession of this land because of my righteousness. No, it is on account of the wickedness of these nations that the Lord is going to drive them out before you. It is not because of your righteousness or your integrity that you are going in to take possession of their land, but on account of the wickedness of these nations. The Lord your God will drive them out before you to accomplish what he swore to your fathers, to Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. Understand then that it is not your righteousness. Do you understand this? It is not because of our righteousness. Don't get egotistical. Don't get prideful when the Lord helps you to conquer difficulties and problems in your life, in your business, and all that you do. Keep very humble. It is because the wickedness out there, God will help you to overcome if you are living his perfect, sinless, commandment-keeping life. Therefore, it is not because of your righteousness that the Lord your God is giving you this good land or helping you to conquer the problems and difficulties in your life and to do what needs to be done. No, you are stiff-necked people. Remember this and never forget how you provoked the Lord your God to anger in the desert. How many times have we provoked God to anger because we have sinned, because we have broken his commandments? We deserve nothing but death. But God in his love has forgiven us over and over again if we will get up, request, plead for forgiveness. But we must also repent from our sins, turn away from them, and then in the power of God, continue to live the perfect, sinless, commandment-keeping life. And then God will forgive and keep blessing us. Remember this and never forget how you provoked the Lord your God to anger in the desert. From the day you left Egypt until you arrived here, you have been rebellious against the Lord. At Horb, you aroused the Lord's wrath so that he was angry enough to destroy you. When I went up on the mountain to receive the tablets of stone, the tablets of the covenant that the Lord had made with you, I stayed on the mountain 40 days and 40 nights. I ate no bread and drank no water. The Lord gave me two stone tablets inscribed by the finger of God. On them were all the commandments the Lord proclaimed to you on the mountain out of the fire on the day of the assembly. Keep in mind, we, like the Israelites, if we accept Jesus as our Savior and Lord, then we accept his Ten Commandments. We have committed ourselves to being obedient to them. 
Therefore, God has the right to discipline us and to do what he pleases with us if we break them or if we keep them. The world, they just have what's called the natural order of things. Whatever comes to them comes to them because they haven't accepted Christ and his commandments. Therefore, they live however they want and the consequences. But we as Christians, just like the Jews, the Israelites, if you accept God as your God, you have to accept. That's part of the bargain, his Ten Commandments. And if you accept God and you obey them, you will be blessed. If you accept God and you break the Ten Commandments, then trouble will come into your life. So if you see troubles and problems in your lives, understand you need to change your life. Get back to God and his Ten Commandments and be obedient. At the end of the 40 days and 40 nights, the Lord gave me the two stone tablets, the tablets of the covenant. Then the Lord told me, go down from here at once because your people whom you brought out of Egypt had become corrupt. They have turned away quickly from what I commanded them and have made a cast idol for themselves. Notice here, they were God's people, but because they have they had rejected God. They had put up a calf idol in place of serving God. They rejected God as their God. Therefore, God accepted their rejection. And he said, the people whom you brought out of Egypt, okay? But as we go on, we'll see what Moses says about this. And the Lord said to me, I have seen this people, and they are stiff-necked people indeed. Let me alone so that I may destroy them and blot out their name from under heaven, and I will make you into a stronger nation and more numerous than they. Moses was a type of Jesus. We have all sinned against God. Jesus Christ stepped in to plead for our lives. Moses stepped in to plead for the lives of the Israelites, and God heard him. So I turned and went down from the mountain while it was ablaze with fire, and the two tablets of the covenant were in my hands. When I looked, I saw that you had sinned against the Lord your God. You had made for yourselves an idol cast in the shape of a calf. You had turned aside quickly from the way that the Lord had commanded you. How many of us turn away so quickly? Our old habits we allow to come back. We allow the world to interfere. Folks, let nothing interfere with your living the perfect, sinless, commandment-keeping life, or things will not go well. So I took the two tablets and threw them out of my hands, breaking them to pieces before your eyes. Moses was very disgusted with the people. Then once again I fell prostrate before the Lord for 40 days and 40 nights. I ate no bread and drank no water because of all the sin you had committed, doing what was evil in the Lord's sight and so provoking him to anger. I feared the anger and wrath of the Lord, for he was angry enough with you to destroy you. But again, the Lord listened to me. Folks, if you will live the perfect, righteous, holy, commandment-keeping life, God will hear your prayers. Just over the past couple of weeks, God has heard my prayers very specifically. I have prayed for certain things to happen to people in order to help them in their Christian walk. And God absolutely answered my prayer towards them. God will answer prayers if we live for him. And the Lord was angry enough with Aaron to destroy him. But at that time, I prayed for Aaron on too. Also, I took that sinful thing of yours, the calf you had made, and burned it in the fire. Then I crushed it and ground it to powder as fine as dust and threw the dust into a stream that flowed down the mountain. We must do the same with sins in our lives. We must get rid of them, crush them, kick them out. Don't live with them or you will be destroyed. In everything that we do, we are to live in obedience to God. You also made the Lord angry at Taborah, at Massa, and at Kibaroth, a Teva. And what the Lord sent you out from Kadesh Barnea, he said, 
Go up and take possession of the land I have given you. But you rebelled again against the command of the Lord your God. You did not trust him or obey him. You have been rebellious against the Lord ever since I have known you. Folks, you can read the Old Testament and see what's happening. Don't, don't follow their example of being disobedient. God wants to bless us. But if you're not being blessed, it's because you are not following what God has commanded. Forget your church. Open up the Bible. Be obedient. I lay prostrate before the Lord those 40 days and 40 nights because the Lord had said he would destroy you. I prayed to the Lord and said, O sovereign Lord, do not destroy your people, your own inheritance that you redeemed by your great power and brought out of Egypt with a mighty hand. Did you see what Moses did there? Earlier, God said, the people you brought out. Now, Moses could have gotten prideful and arrogant. and Ooh, I'm so important. I brought them out. But instead, he humbled himself and he put it back on God. Your own inheritance that you redeemed by your great power and brought out of Egypt with a mighty hand. He recognized who God was. He recognized that it was the power of God that did it, not Moses. Remember your servants, Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. Overlook the stubbornness of this people, their wickedness and their sin. Otherwise, the country from which you brought us will say, because the Lord was not able to take them into the land he had promised them, and because he hated them, he brought them out to put them to death in the desert. But they are your people, your inheritance that you brought out by your great power and your outstretched arm. God wants to do mighty things for you. But you see, he has a problem. If you take possession, if you say, by my righteousness, I did it, my power, then you see, God can't bless you very much because you are stealing the honor that goes to God. But if you will point everyone to Jesus Christ, if you will recognize that it's his power, his honor, his glory, and if you are living by his Ten Commandments, it is his righteousness that's within you and not yours. Then God will bless you. Oh, he will open the windows of heaven. Trust me. Trust God. Put him to the test. He wants you to test him for righteousness. Thank you for being with me and Jesus Christ for another video Bible study.